All right, ladies. First off, this is Mr. Chuck. Good morning. <laughs> he is going to help us with, or he really does. He's the he's the best at the bees. So we just put a fume board on here, and it's going to calm all the bees down. The most popular person on Instagram is Berta. <laughs> Why does it matter that the hive is where it is? The hive is, you want to place your hive so that first thing in the morning the sun hits it and that's their alarm clock, they wake up and they go to work. So you want the sun to hit it, you know, early in the morning. All right, the bee guru, Chuck. <laughs> Good morning. Go Chuck! Kate, suit it up. <laughs> you can also wear this in your own home as a sign for your husband that you do not want to be touched. <laughs> okay, Chuck's taking the fume board off and what he is gonna do is take each frame out. There are eight frames in each box. We will only take the eight frames out of the top box to spin the honey. The rest of the frames are gonna stay because that's what the honey, the honey that the bees will eat during the winter. So he carefully takes the frame out. Is it normally capped on both sides? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's, it's normally capped on both sides. These, these, these bees were just a little slow this year. All right, so Kate's walking this frame over and we've got a little box where she's gonna put it. And the reason is you wanna keep the bees from getting back into this. This I would use if there was a bee stuck on it. I would brush it off. Exactly. So we do this seven more times. There is a queen excluder between the two boxes where the bees live. See if you can see it right there. It's a wire mesh that keeps uh, the queen from coming up here and laying eggs and baby bees up in here. So only the workers can get up here. And what they do is they draw off the foundation and they store honey in, in these cells. And once the cells are completely filled, they will cap it with a thin coating of wax. You can see how this is capped, but this just isn't full yet. Can you think of it as a gas tank? It's, it's only three quarters full. But on the other side, you can see that I tore the frame with my tool right there, but uh, it's completely capped on this. And when you tear it, what will the bees do? Uh, they will repair it in, in a matter of a week. Uh, it's, it's amazing how they're able to reconstruct the cells and pull them back out again. The way that you make sure that the, the honey in this is good, um, you turn it upside down. And if any drops out, that means it has not reached its moisture, you know, it's not thick enough, and it'll actually mess up your entire honey if you don't. Really? Mm -hmm. So this is good? Yeah. All right. Not a, not, not a drop came out. Nope. <laughs> so Chuck, <laughs> If you shake it and honey does come out, you're going to put it back in the hive. Yeah, absolutely, because it's not the right thickness and it's too uh, watery. They, they fan their wings in order to uh, evaporate the moisture out of the, the honey itself. And if it was, uh, if any of this came out, then I would just set it back in there because it will ruin the entire batch if that gets in there. And they flap their wings to cap it. Kate, how did they do it? How do they flap their wings <laughs> like this? Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Uncapping the honey. This you could use this for your homeschool education. For it's your true. kids. Just it's show true. them this and we'll do a whole lesson. See the, you see the color of this honey that we used initially to scrape? If you look right here, you can tell that this is darker and this came from a different nectar source. So the bees, what they gathered, what was blooming this time of the year was different than what they were blooming on that time. All right, we've got to flip them all to, to spin the other side. Uh, you can see through it. You will never get 100% of the honey out of here, which is actually a good thing. It, say, it gives the bees a little bit of something that you don't want to take all their food, but you can look through there and see them all cleared out. I'm saying two gallons. My dad, two gallons. What's your bet, mom? She's cheating. <laughs> two gallons? Yep. 
I'm a little under. I'm a little over. Okay. Optimistic. Optimistic. All right, we tipped it. Tipped it up, getting every last drop. Oh, oh man, we might be right at two. This is it, right? This is it. We won't get more honey until when, Chuck? Uh, maybe June. June the next year. So this has to last us all winter. And that, I guess. That's from, this <laughs> is from our spin. This is from our spin in June. Not my hive though, right? Your hive? So that's my hive. This so was I, mom's I just hive. About that hour of spin in June. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Now wait. There was no hour. It was Barbara <laughs> and Chuck. I wasn't here for it. That is true. Now your hive is now dead. Is that correct? My head. My hive is deceased. <laughs> so this is Berber Kate's hive because it lives in my yard and I take care of it. Mom decided that she would just be part owner of my hive after hers died. Because <laughs> I take care of it. And she I does. feed the ladies when they need it. And I talk to them. What do you feed them, Mom? I feed them sugar water, which is equal parts water and sugar. And you boil it and then you pour it. And you pour it, you put a feeder actually on the top of the hive where the fume board was. Uh -huh. We would have put a feeder and you put the sugar water and there's an area where the bees can come in into it and how, drink. How often do you have to do that? When you, fit, when you fill it up till it's full, but Chuck, what? Uh, in the winter time, you feed them twice a month, but you know, it just depends on if anything's blooming. You mm -hmm. know, as long as they have a food source outside of the hive, they're good. It's, it's good. What, what could we do with all of this stuff? Yeah, those are the cappings that came off. We scraped those off the actual frames to get the honey out. Uh, those are real, that's really good for melting down for beeswax where you would make uh, lip balms, lotions, candles even. Candles take a lot, but that's that's probably good for like your lip balms and stuff. Berta's balm. We'll be doing that in the winter. That's right. Stay tuned for your lip balm. <laughs> and hand cream. <laughs> and hand cream. This is, you keeping this in your fridge, right? Yes. This is from her last spin, so she's adding this, and that'll be like when you go to make lip balm. Yep. I have five or four other Tupperwares of um, this. Berta's body butters. Berta's lip balm. Let's taste now we, now we taste cakes. Oh my word. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot cleaner, isn't it? Yeah. It's really, really, it's, it's not complex. It's really simple. It's not complex. It is simple, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good word. Yeah, no, simple, so, simple, honey. Bland. Complex. <laughs> <Not sure enough. laughs> no, but but it's it's not as complex, so it's really you can kind of tell that this is a single nectar source mm -hmm. because it tastes really clean. This is a multi, because it's all blended together. It's got a really hurt. Honey really does not have an expiration date. Over time, it will um, crystallize. Um, it means it'll become more of a solid, but you can warm it back up and it will actually become a liquid. Um, there's actually cases where they found uh, crystallized honey in the pyramids and they were able to soften it back up and you know, they could tell what kind of flowers were blooming by the pollen you know, that was actually in the, in the honey itself. And that's why you suggest keeping it in the buckets and not jarring it all at once because yeah. of crystallizing? Yeah, it's easier to get a bucket of honey, one bucket, rather than 24. So if you bottle it all up, you have to warm all that up where you could just warm one bucket. Gotcha. All right, so Chuck, all those are the eight frames. He's going to put them back in the box. And then the bees are going to refill them they'll repair anything that we damaged and they'll refill them with honey but it'll take forever uh because it's we're getting into fall and winter and so we will spin them again probably in june all right mom done with my honey i'm just gonna leave you guys with this to to clean up oh no <laughs> see ya <laughs>